Welcome back everyone. Time to do a comparison between the newly released Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and its older brother, the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now, I'll be honest, as after holding them both, after using them both, I've used the Note 9 for a while, I can honestly say that I think these two have more in common than the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 versus the Note 9. I feel like, you know, just based off not even the specs or anything, just the way they feel, the way they look, there's more in common between these two phones than the Note 20 and the Note 9, which means, in my opinion, the Note 9 in some ways is probably more superior than the Note 20, but I'll get into more of those details in a second. But the first thing I want to hit on is the price tag between both of these. The Note 9, when it first came out, you know, it was a flagship phone. It cost a lot, but it doesn't cost a lot that much anymore. It costs about, you can pick one up for like less than $400 easily. Where the Note 20 Ultra, you know, still costs that $1,300. It's probably going to go down very soon, but I'll go ahead and find the cheapest ones of both of these and link them down in the description below so you can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the front, and I'll go and start off with the Note 9 because it is the older one. You have a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display. It's 1440p and it's a really good looking panel. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Samsung has made really, really good panels throughout their lifetime. And the Note 9 is probably one of their peak designed phones in my opinion as well as the peak design screen this is a really really good screen obviously the note 20 ultra has a bigger better screen and all that stuff but at that time for the phone itself and with the panel you were getting it was a really good panel you have a little bit of bezel on the top and bottom but it's really not that big of a deal i really don't think that many people care about this specific type of bezel i think they care more if like there's a home button or like a huge notch and this is much more manageable and i actually really really do like this panel too it really hasn't aged too much of course when you compare it to note 20 ultra it doesn't look as good but the panel on the samsung galaxy note 9 looks really really good no doubt where the samsung galaxy note 20 ultra on the other hand has a 6.9 inch dynamic amoled display i was about to say super amoled plus and this panel is also 1440p. Now, funny enough, in the, in the hand, they kind of feel the same size, I'm not going to lie. But the panel on the Note 20 Ultra is extremely good. You have the fingerprint sensor built into the display. The Note 9 doesn't have that. But on top of that, you have that 120 hertz refresh rate on this panel, which the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, the standard Note 20 doesn't have it either, which is very weird because that's a very expensive phone, but this phone has it. And I can definitely tell you, obviously I can't demonstrate it over the screen, but it is a very, very cool feature. And I'm so glad Samsung put it into this phone. Like I said, it would have been really cool if the other one had it too, but the panel on the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra looks really good. You have that hole punch display up top too. And honestly, when you look at them side by side, you can obviously tell that the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is the better looking one. I mean, size comparison wise, one really doesn't feel like crazy bigger in the hand. The Note 9 feels a little bit slimmer on the sides, like on the width of it. The Note 20 Ultra feels a little bit, you know, wider and the Ultra feels a little bit heavier, especially more top heavy. But I like the panel on both and I'll just say, I mean, I don't think one really feels way bigger than the other one, but definitely, you know, the Note 20 Ultra definitely wins in terms of the front. On the bottom, USB Type-C on both, S Pens on both too, which is really cool. The Note 9 has a headphone jack, which is really, really cool, important to note. In terms of the thickness, you can kind of see that I think the Note 9 is a little bit thicker. They're both kind of in the same ballpark, I, it's kind of hard to tell actually. But the Note 20 has that humongous, you know, camera bump, which I really don't like, I'll be honest. It makes the phone that much more top heavy, where the Note 9 was a lot more slim. As you can see, the camera bump is a lot more manageable. So that's something you should note, but it's really not that big of a deal. You can probably get over it. And on the back, you can see dual camera setup on the Note 9, triple camera setup on the Note 20 Ultra, fingerprint sensor on the back of the Note 9, and a glass back on the Note 9, but a frosted glass back on the Note 20 Ultra. And it feels good. It's definitely not as frosted as something like the iPhone 11 Pro or anything, but it feels really good still. And at least it's a glass back and not like that, you know, plastic back that we have on the Note 20. So definitely on the back of these, they look really good. A cool little advantage of both of these phones is that they do have micro SD card slot support, which is really cool. So you can actually go and expand that storage, which is really, really awesome. And both these phones support it, which is really cool. So in terms of the body, you know, I'll probably have to give the edge to the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. It's a newer phone, but surprisingly, the Note 9 really isn't too far off behind it either. I mean, this is a really good phone too. 
Now with the body out of the way, let's go and hit on the software. And surprisingly, and this is the sad part, the Note 9 is pretty much done with software. It's not going to be getting any more software updates. It's stuck on Android 10. But I think this is a pretty decent version of Android to be ending it on. It did a really good job. You know, it handled everything perfectly fine. It has the gestures, which is really cool. The Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, as we know, is just getting started. But on top of that, the 20 Ultra is actually, you know, getting an extra year of software support on top of its standard version. So this phone only got two full versions of Android. This one's going to be getting three, which is really cool. So that in and of itself may be just a big enough reason for you to go and upgrade from the Note 9 to the Note 20 Ultra because the Note 9 technically isn't really getting another full-fledged version of software. So that's a pretty important thing in my opinion. So in terms of software, you have to give it to the Note 20 Ultra. It automatically wins by default. Now with that being said, let's go and do a little bit of a speed comparison between them. Now the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 has a Snapdragon 845 chipset, an octa-core CPU, an Adreno 630 GPU, and a 6 gigs of RAM on the base model and 8 gigs of RAM on that top tier model, where the Note 20 Ultra has that Snapdragon 865 Plus chipset, an octa-core CPU, an Adreno 650 GPU, and 12 gigs of RAM on all the models. So let's go and see which one is the fast one between these two. Okay, let me go and clear out all these apps in the background, and it should only take a second. There we go. Let's go and load up the Play Store. 3, 2, 1. Okay, the Note 20 Ultra definitely faster there. Scrolling through as you can see, I mean the Note 20 was kind of going ahead of it. And I'm going to keep calling this the Note 20, but it's actually the Note 20 Ultra. And technically the Note 20 Ultra was able to get into the bottom faster. You can do phone calls, 3, 2, 1. Note 20 Ultra faster. Messages, 3, 2, 1. They were kind of identical there. Okay, we'll just let that one slide. And then I have these third party apps that we can just get into. I guess I don't on this one. We can do Facebook, 3, 2, 1. And a little bit of a pop-up here. We'll just let that one slide again. Snake versus Blocks, 3, 2, 1. And as you can see, the Note 20 Ultra was able to get into that one faster. Getting into some gameplay. Let's see if there's a big difference. And I don't think there's going to be that big of a difference. It's a very basic game. You do Dune, 3, 2, 1. And as you can see, even the animations are a little bit faster on the Note 20 Ultra. They're a little bit slower on the Note 9, and ultimately it was slower on the Note 9 to get into the game. But that was very interesting to see. For these type of games, to see that type of animation difference is pretty important. We need to tuple run the original one. 3, 2, 1. Now I may have to restart this. I don't know if I'm on a... Nope, I was, uh, but I was on a game on here, so I'll have to restart it. Tuple run again. 3, 2, 1. And both were kind of the same, but I think the Note 20 Ultra was just a little bit faster at the end of it, as you guys saw, getting into some gameplay. Let's see if there's a difference, and I don't think there's going to be a difference at all, so we'll just let this one go too. We'll do thank you, 3, 2, 1. And Note 9 was actually faster. The Note 20 Ultra was being weird. I don't know what's going on with this phone. It was being weird yesterday too, but I guess we'll give that one to the Note 9. <laughs> Temple Run 2, 3, 2, 1. And that's another big problem of the Note 20 Ultra is just how it, you know, if you click up on the corner of how much it goes like that, that's very annoying. I don't know why that keeps happening. Well, I know why that's happening because of the camera lens, but I wish they fixed it. And Note 9 faster somehow. The Note 20 Ultra a little bit behind. And gameplay-wise, I think they're going to be about the same. This is a pretty basic game too. Do Bofa, 3, 2, 1. And both were pretty close. The Note 9 was able to get into this panel. I find it weird that in the beginning with the Note 20 Ultra was winning like every single one, and now the Note 9 is winning every single one. Fruit Ninja, 3, 2, 1. And we do have a little bit of a pop-up here. Let's see if it's still faster. And even with that little pop-up and me having to accept it, it was still faster than the Note 9. So just factor in like a second or two extra for the Note 9, and that's how much longer it would pretty much take for that one. New stack, 3, 2, 1. And this one was pretty tough too. I'm not really too sure which one was the winner, but they were both were very close at the end of the day. We do Chrome, 3, 2, 1. Okay. The No 9, I think, was faster there. We can do Gallery, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Both were kind of the same there too. Now with these apps loaded in the background, let's go ahead and see which one is, you know, able to keep these apps in the background. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's do Play Store, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Both were able to keep it in the background. Phone calls. Both were able to keep it in the background here too. Messages, okay, both were able to keep these in the background. 
So maybe these two phones will be, you know, be able to do a pretty good job. The Note 20 yesterday, surprisingly, was doing a worse job than the Note 9 in terms of the RAM, which was very weird. And this was very weird too. The Note 20 kind of restarted there in the Note 20 Ultra. So maybe that was that specific app, but we can kind of keep going. Let's do Snake versus Blocks. The Note 9 kind of restarted, but it recovered pretty quickly. So let's just keep it going. Let's do Dune. Okay, both of them able to keep in the background. So maybe it was just that one. Maybe it was just a little glitch. But yesterday, the Note 20 was being weird. So in the speed comparison, I'll definitely tell you, I think the Note 20 Ultra is the faster one. It's going to be better RAM management and stuff. But the Note 9 is still a tremendous performing phone. does a really good job at really anything you'll throw at it. And I think it's like a really good second place for sure. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. Let's go and hit on the cameras. Like I said before, dual camera setup on the Note 9, a 12 megapixel wide angle lens and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, where the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra has a triple camera setup, 108 megapixel wide angle lens, 12 megapixel telephoto lens, and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor. Now the Note 9 takes really good photos, you know, whenever I did anything with it, it was great. Just maybe the UI is, you know, just a little weird. And the UI is the same on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. I like it though, I mean, it looks good. I just wish it was a little bit more cleaner. I think I like OnePluses or whichever one that has like a clear little option right here. But this camera is really good. You know, you have a ton of settings in this camera as well. As you can see, you have all these different settings here. But on top of that, you have those pro options, which are right here. And then you have a lot of these other options too. So this is definitely a really good phone when it comes down to the features and everything. The photos, the videos will look really good. You can zoom in a lot with that telephoto lens. But the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra will probably end up being the better camera overall. We have that ultra wide sensor, which is really cool. We have that telephoto lens, you know, that looks really good. You have a higher megapixel count, and you do have the ability of shooting 8K video on the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as well. So this camera ultimately will look better and take better photos. But I still think the Note 9 does a really good job. As you can see, the Note 9 is right there. <laughs> I think you'll still be able to take really good photos on this thing really good videos on the Note 9 as well as the Note 20 Ultra. This is a really good camera, one of the best ones out there. And for sure the Note 20 Ultra is a better camera. Now ending it off with the battery life, we have a 4,000 mAh battery on the Note 9, but a 4,500 mAh battery on the Note 20 Ultra. And for sure, I mean, I can tell you, you both have wireless charging, which is good, but the Note 20 Ultra has reverse wireless charging. And I would probably tell you the Note 20 Ultra will have the better battery life, but with that 120Hz refresh rate, it might mean the battery may suffer a little bit, but I still feel like this battery life will be better than the Note 9. This Note specifically has been out for a while. The battery's degraded a little bit, so it's probably not at that full 4,000 mAh hours anymore, but it's still a very good sized battery. It's still good at the end of the day, but I still think the Note 20 Ultra will probably have the better battery life and the better battery features at the end of the day. So to pretty much sum up this video, you know, which phone should you pick up? I'll be completely honest, if you have all the money in the world, picking up the Note 20 Ultra is a no-brainer. It's going to do you so much better than really a lot of phones in the market, especially the Note 9. But I think the Note 9 is still a tremendous phone. If you own it, I would just keep it for a year or at least for a couple of months until the Note 20 Ultras go down in value in the used market. And then I would just snag one of these up for like 700 or something like that. But if you're in the middle, I would even pick up, you know, a Note 10 or something like that too. I feel like you can't go wrong with that phone either, so... That's really pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that means so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.